Hello and good day everyone. Meteorologist Mark Muller here with MeteoMark's Weather. It's great to have you on the channel here. I have a lot to talk about with Invest 90L pulling away from Florida, still causing some problems with rainfall here from South Florida all the way through the Bahamas. Does this have a chance to impact the East Coast at all? And will it become something subtropical or even a tropical storm? We'll explore that as it still has a narrow window of opportunity. And then we turn our attention to the system here off the Yucatan Peninsula into the southwestern gulf this could actually amount to something and has a significant chance to develop especially to the middle to latter part of next week it could actually push tropical moisture well into texas louisiana and eastern mexico but is something bigger brewing here into the western caribbean as we head to the 21st 22nd into the 23rd as it barrels into the gulf of mexico We'll explore whether this could be our late June hurricane. Let's get into it. And just a quick reminder, if you haven't watched my Hurricane 2024 Outlook, it's a link in the description down below and at the end of this video. So starting off here with our European model, and we'll transition over towards the GFS. Now, we are still watching Invest 90L here off the southeast coast. And as we continue to go out here in time, you can actually see this system has a narrow window of opportunity to develop. It starts to look a little bit better organized throughout the day on Friday as it parallels the North Carolina coast. Unfortunately, stormy rains will continue across South Florida here, producing another three to six inches of rain all the way through the Bahamas here. So yes, you do need the rain, but it's a little too much too quickly. This system could potentially become subtropical or extra tropical as we head throughout early Saturday morning, but once it reaches Nova Scotia here, as we head towards the middle of the weekend, all bets are off. Whatever it is at this point, it's definitely extra tropical as it becomes a big bombing low pressure system up here. Now that turns our attention to the rest of the Atlantic. What I want to draw your attention to initially here is this big high pressure system that's going to be building west and combining forces with some of these high pressure systems off the U.S. East Coast and Eastern North America. Our next system starts to emerge here off the Yucatan Peninsula with plenty of moisture here in the Bay of Campeche. This is going to be looking like a tremendous amount of tropical moisture. As we go out here in time towards the 17th into the 18th, look what starts to develop here. This is right off the eastern Mexican coastline here. We're going to start to see tropical moisture funneled northward towards Texas and Louisiana as this system becomes very, very big here big wind field as well as rain field so this system it may not become a hurricane but at this point it's got a pretty good chance as we continue to go out here in time of actually becoming some sort of tropical storm so yes a very large storm they're very difficult to organize but it's in a good environment very low wind shear and as we continue to go out here in time landfalls right around the 20th right around tampico here eastern mexico and that just continues westward with lots of life-threatening rains you can see this is not going anywhere anytime soon so what does that lead us to here a couple things and they're going to be showing up on the gfs as well this next tropical wave moving through the bahamas another one here just east of jamaica and around the trinidad tobago area and then we're just going to line them up out here in the atlantic this almost looks like August, not June. And you can see these high pressure systems up here building westward. That's going to help propel these storms and push them further westward here instead of curving out and becoming fish storms. So that is a big concern. But watch this wave right here and this one. These are the ones that could become a problem here as we go in time. You can see as we get towards the 21st into the 22nd, this one starts to emerge around the northern Yucatan Peninsula and the western tip of Cuba. This could start to re-emerge out into the Gulf of Mexico and potentially try to develop. This is a very similar location to the GFS, and I'll be showing that here in just a moment. Now, off the U.S. East Coast, let's just go back just a little bit here. That tropical wave tries to make a beeline directly up the u.s east coast so that's something we need to keep a very close watch on as well and this last frame of the european model is very intense look at these huge tropical waves out here 
this really does look like late August, early September. All right, so for the GFS here, there it is, Invest 90L, sitting just east of Florida, continuing with that heavy rain. You can see it really showing up very nicely here, that tropical connection just flowing through the Yucatan Peninsula and all the way up just off the U.S. East Coast here. So we still have that window of opportunity for Invest 90L to develop and the GFS kind of taking it out more this direction as high pressure builds in quicker to the north for the weekend. So that's pretty interesting. That leaves us to our next system here. As we get towards the 16th into the 17th, you can see GFS actually pushing moisture well northward, well out ahead of this system, all the way up to Mississippi and Louisiana. This is a trend we'll have to keep an eye on. It's a little bit of a troubling trend. But look at this. Towards the 18th into the 19th, Really agreeing with the European model here and surging that moisture just off the Texas coast and then towards Houston towards the 19th. Land falls a little bit quicker here towards Tampico, so a very similar location to the European model here. And then pushing westward towards the 20th. Look at that. All of the state of Texas getting in on this tropical moisture. And then our attention turns to the rest of the Atlantic here especially right here into the Western Caribbean. This is towards the 20th. Watch what starts to develop out here. This is a troubling trend. This was a little bit further to the east uh, yes, or the last couple days. And then today, this turned a little bit more towards the west. So this is more towards Belize, Honduras, the Yucatan Peninsula. And then watch this. Crossing over the Yucatan on the 22nd, and following a very similar path here on the 23rd, could this be our late June hurricane? This thing really wraps up pretty quickly and intensifies. But I want to make note of something to you. Look at this big, massive ball of moisture associated with this. So one thing to note, these circulations this early in the season are containing quite a bit in the way of heavy rain and that's going to be you know the big threat with these systems flooding rains and look at that it really starts to develop this really does look like a hurricane uh, by the 24th keep in mind things can change especially this far out because just 36 hours ago we had a landfall with this hurricane in this location up towards the panhandle of florida and alabama and mississippi now it's all the way over here so that tells us that, you know, we still have a lot of variables uh, that could actually play into this storm. One thing that's certain or getting a little bit more certain is the fact that we could have some sort of Gulf of Mexico system in the time frame of June 22nd through the 26th here. So look at all this moisture this thing making landfall just south of Brownsville, Texas, and look at this massive plume of moisture just funneling up on the east side of this system. This just goes to show you how active the tropics are going to continue to be. And could something actually come out of this? This kind of sits and spin this area of thunderstorms towards the 26th. We'll have to see if that's maybe some convective feedback because that can happen. But at this point, it's looking pretty ominous. And off the U.S. East Coast, that system that heads off the U.S. East Coast, pushing off this direction, and doesn't have a chance to gather any of this moisture and kick it out. So you start to see what's happening with this system towards the 27th. It doesn't look like it's going anywhere at all here on the last frame. And it's kind of stuck. So this is the part where flooding becomes a major issue. Okay, so sea surface temperature analysis. Yeah, the Saharan dust is doing its thing out here in the MDR, knocking those temperatures, sea surface temperatures down a tad. But look at this. I mean, we're still talking about bath water here. This is more indicative here of early September. So as we take a look at the GFS model here, our mid and upper layer dry air analysis. Initially here into the Gulf, it's dry. Eastern Caribbean, we got that dust out here in the MDR. Now, as we go out here in time, you can see our Invest 90L system, that pushing off towards the northeast. We have tropical moisture continuing across South Florida, even into Sunday, June 16th here. Now, one thing to note, 
Watch what starts to happen with our Yucatan system here. That surge of tropical moisture towards Texas and Louisiana as we get into Thursday, June 20th here. Look at that surge of moisture all the way up here into the western uh, Gulf of Mexico and Caribbean. Now watch behind it here, our next system following a very similar pattern here on the GFS. And look at the moisture plume associated with this. That is a crazy amount of moisture here at mid layers. And that just funnels all the way up into the central Gulf. And as you can see here, there it is, 984 millibars. I was telling you on the GFS before on the graphical uh, version of it, you can see that that storm system heading out here, high pressure building in behind it. This, this hurricane has nowhere to go. It's just sitting on the coastline here. All right, so the European model here, let's just back up to where we're at. And of course, our Invest 90L system continuing to spin northeastward here. We'll have to see if that still has a chance to become subtropical or a tropical storm. But then the big, you know, our eyes turn towards this big potential storm. European model pushing this a little bit more towards the north and the east here. You can see that as we go in, out in time. It's a very slow mover, though, so it's going to continue to pinwheel moisture well northward here into Texas and so southwestern Louisiana here. So watch out. There could be some flooding concerned as far north as Texas and coastal Louisiana. And that continues here under the 21st and the 22nd. Then we start to see that positive anomaly here, the surge of moisture here into the northwestern Caribbean. That could be signifying our potential developing storm for right around Sunday, June 23rd. So let's go week by week here with our CFS weekly precipitation anomalies you can see the gulf really just continuing the caribbean out into our itcz here look at this as we head towards uh, the latter part of june into early july here we really start to solidify here across the caribbean islands and that pinwheels this is heading on into uh right around mid-july here you can see that system analysis here showing the ITCZ coming pretty far to the north here, pinwheeling all those tropical waves right into the Gulf of Mexico and right up the east coast here. So our monthly CANSIPS model here, look at this. This is for July. The Things really just start to come together here. This whole area just surging with tropical moisture. You can see it's affecting the Gulf Coast, the east coast, all the way up to the mid-Atlantic as well. We'll have to see how many of these storms actually get pulled up the coast. Well, my concern is, is we're going to see these high pressure systems just continue to steer these systems in the direction of North America here and all the islands and eventually Central America. Now, as we get into September, that really solidifies here across the Gulf and the Caribbean into October and into November. Like I said before, I think we could be seeing storms Name storms in the Caribbean and out here in the Atlantic well into November. A very backloaded season, I believe, at this point. So the Caribbean, Central America here. This is where we're seeing the heaviest rain from the Yucatan all the way up to the northern Bahamas here. You know, additional accumulation of rain, 50 to 100 millimeters. You know, a solid inch and a half to as much as four inches here. Now look at our tropical wave that continues to push towards the northwest, the western part of the Gulf of Mexico and the Bay of Campeche here. This is where rainfall totals are going to be approaching 125 to as much as 200 millimeters. So this is going to be a solid four to, you know, nine inches of rain easily here with additional rainfalls here into Central America as well. Jamaica, you know, you might make out here with 45 to 60 millimeters, about an inch to an inch and a half here. Cayman Islands looking at the same and lesser amounts here back towards Hispaniola, the southeastern Bahamas and Puerto Rico. Now, as we get into the Eastern Caribbean, let's see what's going on here. Just a little bit through Saturday here at the Northern Lesser Antilles and the Virgin Islands and Puerto Rico. But you know, it's not until we get towards, say, the middle to latter part of next week, we start to see these tropical waves push a little bit further to the north of Trinidad, Tobago, and areas northward here. And then we start to get, you know, increased moisture uh, with our tropical wave action. So for our HRRR future radar, first I'm going to cover our tropical entity on Vest 90 l out here into Florida. The good news is overnight, look what it actually starts to push away. Unfortunately, it's towards the Bahamas at this point, but you do need some rain out here in the central 
in eastern Bahamas. You see our low pressure system is booking it finally towards the northeast here. So it's just pinwheeling off the coastline here of South and North Carolina. It's going to be really close to the Outer Banks here, but I think as we go out here in time, it's going to slide just to your east. And then look what it starts to do up here into the northeast. It combines forces, which I'm going to show you momentarily. Our system on Friday here into the northeast is going to be really close here in Nantucket and Cape Cod. We could actually have a close call here, but more likely Nova Scotia. Coastal Nova Scotia is going to get in in the act of this. And as we go out in here in time, even some of the heavier returns really affecting Halifax up here. As we can see throughout the rest of your Friday here for South Florida, we still have a lot of gully washers cropping up here. So you're not done with the rain just yet. We will have those pop-up showers and thunderstorms. Thankfully, it's not going to be tremendous like you've seen it, but some of these could amount to an additional three to six inches. Severe weather outlook for your Friday. We got two areas, one here into the northeast. You can see we have a slight risk into the yellow here and even a marginal risk in a very large area damaging wind large hail especially friday afternoon into the evening hours so watch out if you're in any one of these areas these zoned areas and out here into the western plains and eastern uh, parts of colorado as well slight risk of severe weather damaging wind large hail tornado possibility so as we go synoptic here you can see what's going on Thursday evening into Thursday night, explosive thunderstorm development just continues here uh, into the plains and into the uh, parts of the Ohio Valley and Midwest. That's going to pinwheel towards the east 5 a.m., getting into western Ohio and eventually towards Cleveland down towards Columbus uh, by 7 a.m. on Friday morning. That starts to push towards Erie, Pennsylvania by 9 a.m. And look what starts to develop here. This is that area of potential severe weather into the northeast. Uh, for your Friday, watch out because some of these could contain damaging wind, large hail. This is noon, 2 p.m., really solidifying here across parts of the upper Susquehanna region, Catskills, Hudson Valley, all over through parts of western and central New England. And that pushes to the east. This is rush hour. Look at this. We still have some scattered showers and thunderstorms here into Ohio, southwestern Pennsylvania. But the big story is going to be our area from New Jersey, eastern Pennsylvania, the Hudson Valley of New York, heading all the way into New England, all the way up to Concord. Some stronger thunderstorms all the way up to Augusta, Maine here, and then all the way over towards New Brunswick. Scattered showers and strong thunderstorms. Look at New York City by 7 p.m., Friday evening, that is not looking very good, but it does start to weaken as it pushes to the east. And another complex towards midnight on Friday evening starts to push to the east with our final push of tropical moisture. And there's our big system off the coast potentially becoming, you know, whatever with Invest 90L. All right, so let's take a look at our European model here, picking up right off where we left off with the HRRR model. You can see what's going on here. So that storm system in the Ohio Valley in the Northeast for Friday, that's pinwheeling out of here for Saturday and combining forces with this low pressure system. That's why I still think Invest 90L could potentially develop into something out here just off the New England coastline heading towards Nova Scotia here. You can see that put, pulls up. Definitely becoming, if it does become something subtropical or tropical, at this point it's becoming extra tropical. But high pressure building in behind it for the weekend, setting the stage for another severe weather outbreak here across the northern part of the Midwest. And that high pressure just continues. This heat dome, essentially, is just going to build across the east here. And of course, right on the southwest corner is where we're going to see our potential tropical system down here into the western Gulf. So watch out. You know, that's going to be funneling moisture towards Texas and Louisiana. Uh, and, and continuing in time, that high pressure just camps out off the U.S. East Coast and Southeast Canada for pretty much the entire week next week. We go to the 21st until look at this. Yeah, I showed you this in the tropical update, a, a tropical wave making it as far north here as, you know, just off the Carolina and Florida and Georgia coastlines here. That's something we'll have to keep an eye on. Parade of systems will continue to go up and over this, what we call the ridge, the ring of fire. But even high pressure start to build in across southeast Canada as well. And I'll cover that in my Canadian weather outlook momentarily. 
But as we can see out here, the 23rd into the 24th, one of these tropical disturbances tries to make a beeline up the U.S. East Coast with continued storminess up here across parts of the lakes. So for a total liquid equivalent precipitation here, we have that system here from the Ohio Valley, the Midwest into the Northeast for Thursday night into Friday. This is going to produce at least through uh, late Friday here, anywhere from a quarter to a half an inch, with some areas getting three quarters to one and a quarter inches here, picking up some beneficial rains. But here across South Florida, Central and South Florida in particular, this is where we're going to see an additional three to six inches of rain, at least through early Saturday. And as we continue in time, look at the Western Gulf. That's where things really start to perk up. Actually, the entire tropics start to open up down here. South Texas, watch, as well as South Florida again as we get towards, say, next week. But look at the strong to severe thunderstorm outbreaks here across the Midwest and the Plains. That's going to result in more rain and additional rainfalls here into the Ohio Valley. All right, so if we take a look at our European upper air pattern here, it is going to be a firecracker ridge as we head into next week. Look at that ridge. Mid to upper 90s. Oh, look at that. That is crazy insane. All the way through Friday, June 21st. Look at that. It's still lasting into the last week of June here. Much of North America under a ridge. And then as we use the medium range climate model to go beyond that, we start to see that ridge breaking down in the east, but it's quickly replaced again by another strengthening ridge. So another heat wave. Wow, look at that. Right around 4th of July weekend. Yeah, so from the 4th through Friday and that Saturday, yeah, we could be looking at maximum heat. But it's right around that second, third week of July, we have that troughiness kick in and some cooler temperatures. All right, for your Canadian weather here, we are looking at the European model. Low pressure spinning across Quebec, that's going to be a fading memory as we head on later Friday into Saturday. This high pressure system sets you up for a beautiful weekend here across Ontario, Quebec, even much in uh, New Brunswick here, except for coastal New Brunswick. This is where you'll see that increasing chances of showers uh, as this system approaches from the south uh, with that potential developing low pressure system, maybe subtropical in nature. There it is. It's becoming a pretty strong storm here by New Finland up by uh, J uh, June 20 or 16th here. Look at that. And then our next system ejecting from the Canadian Rockies. This system really blasting up towards Hudson Bay. May get a cold front moving through this region, maybe a few scattered strong storms, but nothing too terribly widespread. That continues towards the northeast for your 18th into the 19th. Another low pressure here across Ontario with high pressure really building in. This is the first time you really see some clearing conditions across western and central Canada. That is looking really nice. But the big focus is going to be the storm track up and around the ring of fire here in central and eastern Ontario and northern Quebec, you know, around this high pressure system across eastern Canada. That's going to continue to keep those disturbances going north and east until we get to about the 21st into the 22nd. And then we have our own area of high pressure building in and just a weak low pressure out here in the British Columbia and Canada rainfall here. What is going on here? Yeah, eastern, especially the northern provinces of Ontario and Quebec. That's where you'll see a lot of the activity. Also, British Columbia and Alberta out here and northern Manitoba. But the common theme here is going to be storms ejecting from the U.S. northern plains and then northward towards north central parts of Ontario and Quebec. Even some rainfall here into southern Ontario and Quebec is too. It, we're, we're looking at anywhere from 35 to as much as 65 uh, millimeters on average here so you know you're talking about a good inch and a quarter upwards of two and a half inches all right so for the western pacific do i really have anything to talk about wow japan is actually completely clear at this point the philippines you're getting your tropical moisture this is normal for this time of year we got a few tropical waves out here but you know what this is, this is really insane the pacific both the eastern pacific and the western pacific have been abnormally quiet and look at this. As we go out here in time, this is through the 20th, 21st. Yeah, you're getting your monsoon up here into eastern China and Japan here and even South Korea. But none of this is any tropical in nature. And as we just continue just a tad bit further out here, there really is not much showing up here. Intertropical convergence zone. We went a little further to the west there. 
Yeah, we, ha we have a lot of moisture here, but none of these are really looking promising. I got plenty more weather for you in just a moment, but take a look at my affiliate. Do you want some awesome maps? Check this out. I am proud to announce that I am now an affiliate with Trilogy Maps. TrilogyMaps.com bringing you the most digital, customizable maps found nowhere else on the internet. These maps are simply stunning. It's an advanced layering system that makes these maps great for making forecast maps with ease or any other maps that you would like to display important information on. The resolution on these maps is simply amazing. From the detail of everything here in the States, and you can also create stunning, digital, professional layered maps from also across the entire world. And don't forget in checkout, the discount code option, use my code, MediaMark, hit apply, and you will get 20% off your order. So if you want the most professional, customizable, and affordable weather maps found nowhere else on the internet, look no further than TrilogyMaps.com. Link in the description down below along with your discount code. So, heat. That's going to be the big thing. And you're probably scratching your head up here in the Midwest and the Northeast and the lakes. These are some nice 70s into Friday, into your Saturday. Look at that. Watch this. Sunday. mid 90s start bubbling their way all the way into Ohio and to parts of Michigan. Look at, watch this surge. We're eroding those 70s into 80s in the Northeast. 97 here into parts of Ohio. 96 in Detroit. Look at these 90s pushing their way up. N mid to high 90s here into parts of Indiana. Into Tuesday. That's 97 in Wilkes-Barre, Scranton, 95 in Albany, 92 in Cleveland, 95 in Detroit. This is insane. Even 90s all the way up through the Mid-Atlantic, all the way here into New England. And watch the last day here I have for you Wednesday. Mid to high 90s. That's 99 there in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. A extended forecast from hometown viewers. Bingham to Scranton, Upper Susquehanna River Valley of New York and Pennsylvania. Look at this. Friday, we could have some stronger thunderstorms, damaging wind, large hail. It's not going to be a widespread outbreak, but that possibility exists as we continue throughout the day as well with that daytime heating getting up towards the low 80s into Saturday and Sunday. Look at this. A beautiful weekend. Sunny skies as well. Monday and Tuesday. It does get extremely hot, though, towards the mid to upper 90s as we progress throughout next week. As always, thank you for joining me for this edition of Media Mark's Weather. Also, don't forget to join me on Facebook at Media Mark, also Weather Northeastern, also Twitter at Weather Eastern. Don't forget it's MediaMark.com. And don't forget, if you want to send me a coffee, there is a link, Super Thanks. You can smash that Super Thanks button or my PayPal link in the description down below. You can buy me a cup of coffee. Thanks, everyone. Share that video. Subscribe if you haven't. Smash that like button.